it gives me enormous pleasure to welcome the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. It's been 15 years since the Prime Minister last addressed this conference. The applause was polite, but within the farming sector, as Rishi Sunak knows, deep frustrations lie. It's farmers who feed us. Farmers who embody those British values of strength, resilience, warmth and independence. In an age of it was a charm offensive laden with multi-million pound farming grant announcements, albeit some noted from a pot of money already pledged. The Prime Minister spoke of cutting red tape to allow farmers greater scope to diversify, of making the Farm to Food Security Summit an annual event. Farming is going through its biggest change in a generation. And as you do so, this government will be by your side. Where have they been? They're rushing over to our side, yeah. if they can find where to go. Watching on from their dairy farm in Wiltshire, 80 miles away, Joe and Roe Collingbourne. What, what, what do you make of that? I think what he was saying was absolutely fine. But the Conservative government should have been saying that when we came out of Brexit, instead of leaving us in a dreadful muddle. They're bringing out scheme after scheme. Um, all we want is a decent price for our product. And that product is milk from the family's beloved 130 strong Frisian Holstein herd. That cow up there, this, this one here, this, this one here. here. I mean, uh, the epitome of 100 years breeding, good body depth. It's no good having long legs, you've got to have a good body depth. Had it not been for their cheese making business, the farm might have had to go, he says. Such have been the pressures of fluctuating prices. Today, the Prime Minister spoke of new laws to come, offering dairy farmers fairer deals. I want to see the results, not the promises. Who's to say Rishi Sunak will be in power much longer? Recent polling suggests that Labour is now just ahead of the Tories in some of the most rural constituencies. Some might wonder how much that may have influenced the Prime Minister's decision to be in Birmingham today. Political sensitivities about grievances within the farming sector have certainly been widespread of late. Farmers have staged protests in Dover twice this month, complaining about what they see as cheap foreign food imports and unfair pricing. This was in Greece today. Farmers converging on Parliament in protest over rising costs, among other things. And in Poland, there was a near total blockade of the Ukrainian border by farmers worried about the imports of cheap grain. Multiple protests have already seen the EU forced to backtrack on some environmental policies. While back in Britain, attempts to reshape agricultural policy in the shadow of a climate emergency continue to attract criticism, even among those already embracing more sustainable methods. I think farming has to really play its part. And actually, I mean, I love helping the environment, so I embrace that. But we also have to produce food. But do you think the government has got it right in England at the moment in terms of bringing the farming community with them on sustainable farming? The problem is they're not bringing the farming uh, community with them because, as I say, it's just been so confusing. In Wales recently, there's been more than confusion mounting anger, a series of protests in fact from some over the Welsh Government's proposals to make farm payments dependent on land being set aside for tree planting, among other measures. Labour in power in Wales will have their opportunity tomorrow to address this conference. But that's what we're going to set out to deliver and it's been a real pleasure to be here with you today. Thanks very much. Like the Prime Minister today, no doubt keen to position themselves as the party on the side of the rural electorate. Andy Davis reporting. Well, earlier I spoke to the NFU president, Minette Batters, and began by asking her what the Prime Minister's appearance today says about how important farmers' votes could be in the upcoming election. All parties know that the rural vote is going to be really influential in the outcome of this election. But I would say, you know, the challenges that I put to the Prime Minister today, to the government, apply to every party. And as yet, we don't see a plan for food production from any party. And, and as things develop over the next coming weeks and months, we will want to see a, a plan for food production and what every party's offer is, is going to be on all of that. There were a lot of very warm words from the Prime Minister today, but do you get a sense that he actually understands 
what the NFU have been saying for some time is an absolute crisis. Look, I think things are, are much improved. You know, he's taken a different approach on trade. He's taken a different approach on food security, a different approach on procurement, government buying standards. But you're right. What we have been focusing on is actually what are you going to do at the next election? And of course, he couldn't answer those questions. But I think he's under no illusion on the back of today's conference that people want to see a plan for the future. They do feel let down by the past. They feel let down in these trade negotiations. I asked him if he was going to introduce the core standards in all trade deals. And he didn't quite answer that question. So for the Conservatives, for Labour, for the Lib Dems, for the Greens, we need answers on all of those questions. But the difficulty for you and the union to a degree is, you know, we have seen some protests by British farmers, but nothing close to the extent of what we see across Europe, you know, roadblocks, dumping tomatoes, raids on logistics hubs. And it's worked, hasn't it? We see the European Commission rolling back on plans to introduce greener farming rules, restricting food imports from Ukraine. Increasingly, farmers may think that is the only way to deliver what they need. You know, we were faced with losing red diesel subsidy, which is what the Germans have been protesting about. We were faced with losing that three years ago. We engaged uh, with the Treasury. The Chancellor said when he uh, spoke to the budget in Parliament, I have listened to the NFU. We have decided that we will not be axing red diesel subsidy. So, yes, sometimes you have to protest, which is what the German uh, farming uh, unions recognised they had to do. You know, if, if we and felt the French, that there was and a very, need very and a clear case... very, very disruptive action. Yeah, but also you have to factor in that Just Stop Oil have caused, I, I think, themselves a lot of challenges going forwards by disrupting people's daily lives. So you have to have a clear call to arms and there has to be a clear message to government of what the solution is to solve this. I don't think just taking direct action per se and disrupting people's daily lives, that has to be a very, very big judgment call with the number of people that we have in this country. And, you know, as I say, you've got to have the solution in place. It's no good just focusing on what you don't want. And just in terms of the place that it is in, you, you rightly say, you know, it's in transition at the moment. This sort of almost battle, if you like, between food security and the environmental goals that we know have been set out. Is the harsh truth that some farmers will just lose out on the way? Look, it really matters to us as a membership organisation that we take all our members on this journey with us. It isn't going to take that much to sort it out, but you've got to focus on food production and the environment. You can't separate them. You have to treat them as both one and the same things. Uh, and just finally, it's got to go beyond an election year, whatever party is in government, hasn't it, in terms of that focus? It, it does, and food is too important um, to be politicised. You know, we've got to get to a cross-party consensus on the future of food production, the future of farming, and have agreement at a framework level between the four nations. Minette Batters, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you.